Galatians 5, verse 1. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Now that word liberty kind of, you know, it conveys so much, if you think about it, to so many different people uh, in so many different places. But here, the Apostle Paul, and we'll talk about that more, but uh, the Apostle Paul, uh, this verse 1 is, is either a summary or a transition verse. What do I mean by that? If it's a summary, uh, you have to go back to verse 31, chapter 4. It says, So then, brethren, we are not children of the bondwoman, but of the free. And then verse 1, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherein Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. All that the Apostle Paul labored there in chapter 4, uh, bringing about sonship, you think of the liberty of that, and being sons of God, uh, the blessings, the, uh, the blessings of Abraham, all these things. And so Paul says, here, here is, is the final note as we sum up chapter 4. But also, I think, not only is it a summary, but it's a transitional verse. Transitional verse. You see, now think back for a minute, and we'll do, do just some mental uh, review here of, of the book of Galatians. For example, the Apostle Paul defended his apostleship in chapter 1, verse 11, through chapter 2, verse 21. The Apostle Paul defended the gospel in chapter 3, verse 1, to chapter 4, verse 31. Now, chapters 3 and 4 is really... Well, what, what uh, one man said, and I think it's very true, is uh, chapter 3 and 4 is, is, contains the doctrine of liberty. Think of that, the doctrine of liberty, 3 and 4. Chapters 5 and 6, uh, the title for that, that we're coming into now, would be the life of liberty. The life of liberty. And I think those are appropriate uh, subtitles, in a sense, as we look at chapter 5 and 6. But when we come to chapter 5 in this, in this transitional verse, uh, we see in verses 1 to 12 the, the exhortation or the command to stand in liberty. And, and the reason is that because verse 2 through 6 is we're going to look at uh, those who have or are falling from grace. What does it mean to fall from grace? And that's what Paul says there. Um, he says, you have fallen from grace. And so, but this outline here is standing in liberty, verses 1 to 12, we can go on. And, and verses 7 through 12, Paul's going to go and see, and he's going to look at those who are causing such to fall, the Judaizers, and why they do it, why they are doing it. But see, in this outline here of chapter 5, you see, for those who do not fall, who are steadfast, and then they go on to serve in liberty. And it's all there in chapter 5 and 6. So this word liberty, let's look at that for a minute here. As we continue and we begin to look at, uh, uh, like I say, stand in liberty. Stand in liberty. And then uh, verses 2 through 6, we're going to look at those who are, or have. Now that, that's important, we'll see. They, they haven't totally fallen they're not apostates, they're not reprobate, but they are falling, okay? And we'll see what that means to fall from grace. Uh, we'll look at these ones. Liberty. Notice here for a minute, uh, how, how would you describe sonship? How would you describe all the blessings of Abraham? How would you describe all the, the enormous uh, content of the new covenant that we're under and that we're a part of in Christ Jesus? Uh, Apostle Paul uh, uses the word liberty, and I think that's appropriate. When you think about sonship, new life in Christ, walking and living in the Spirit. But notice here, we think about past struggles of liberty, you know. I don't want to go too, too deep into this, you know, back into the Revolutionary War and, the, you know, 1776, and I understand, you know, that, that's the, the, the guy on the other side, right? We understand that. But I think when we come to that uh, word liberty, okay, and why, yeah, maybe 
maybe um, why Americans are so, uh, well, there's a lot of reasons, but, you know, take away their liberty. It's not just take away their guns, but take away their liberty, okay? Now, I was thinking about, uh, I was writing an article in the newspaper or something, and it's talking about, you know, who was it who said, give me liberty or give me death? What was his name? Patrick Henry. Patrick Henry. And, and, and maybe, maybe we, uh, as Canadians, you know, we usually say, well, we, we waited and we, we got our liberty, uh, you know, uh, normal way, you know, we waited, stuff like that. Uh, and so we're not, we're not um, as uh, dogmatic or, or feisty or, you know, you know, take away our liberty. Uh, you know, those are fighting words for Americans. But what about Christians? See, that's what Paul's saying here. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made you free. In this great struggle, okay, of uh, salvation, notice that there. Uh, how would you, you know, how would you describe the Lord Jesus saving you? It, it says right here, Christ had made us free. That's how Paul describes salvation. Isn't that, that's amazing, isn't it? I mean, not only as we think about the darkness of sin, and we were darkness, and Satan's uh, uh, opposition, and we're, we're slaves to sin, and under the judgment of God, you see, uh, we were brought to the glorious uh, liberty, okay? Freedom. Freedom. Real freedom. Uh, the Lord Jesus says it this way in his uh, ministry there in Luke 4, when he begins his ministry. And when he begins to proclaim the gospel, he says this, Luke 4, 17 through 19. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah, and when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach, what? Deliverance to the captives and recovery of the sight of the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. It says to preach deliverance to the captives, to set at liberty them that are bruised, and the idea is the, the oppression of Satan. Uh, I think it's Acts chapter 10, it says, uh, the summary of the Lord Jesus by Peter, I think it is, it says the Lord Jesus went around doing good and delivering those that were oppressed of the devil. Liberty. Preaching deliverance to the captive. You see, that's liberty when we think about redemption, ransom. We can even use that word emancipation, right? <laughs> Civil War, President Lincoln, Proclamation of Emancipation when the slaves went free. Well, see, that was, that, again, that's, you know, we must get our idea, you know, uh, in, in our day we're losing our liberties so quickly. Um, we're not even putting up a fight in Canada. I really don't believe so. I mean, the, the Supreme Court has just taken away the ban on system suicides. I hear no outcries. I hear no outcries from the masses. We're like sheep to the slaughter. Where's the resistance? You know, and, but you see, that, that, that's uh, it's a political or in, the, in, in Canada, but we're talking about spiritual liberty here. Okay? These Judaizers are coming in, and, and, they're, and uh, these uh, Galatian saints are, in a sense, are subjecting themselves to bondage. And they don't even think that is bondage. And, and, and it's, of course, the Judaizers are saying, this is real freedom. That's what the Jehovah Witness is going to say to you. And that's what the Mormon's going to say to you. And that's what the Muslim is going to say to you. We, we have freedom, real freedom. I think Joe Holstein says the same thing, right? God wants you to be free. He wants you to be happy. He wants you to be prosperous. He wants you to be happy more than glorifying Him. Wow. That's not freedom. That's not the freedom that the Apostle Paul is talking about here. And so this word freedom is, is again, uh, when, when you think of the word freedom, and, and verse 1 is so important here, uh, especially when you think about when Christ has made us free. That's how you describe, you know, uh, how did God save you? Well, the Lord Jesus set me free. He set me free. 
Let me read to you John chapter 8. And as I was thinking about liberty and freedom and Christ's work on the cross represented as freedom, freeing me, I was reminded of these verses, what the Lord Jesus spoke to the Pharisees that day. He says, John 8, verse 30, And he spake these words, many believed on him. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If you continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Amen. Then answered him, We be Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? Well, that's, that was an outright lie. They were under Roman oppression. <laughs> the scepter uh, for years had been taken away from Israel. You see, their concept of freedom, okay? Well, the, remember, the Romans allow us to have the temple. The Romans allow us, okay, to have our services. The Romans, well, we, we, we can't execute anybody. We lost that power. And these ones thought that was freedom. But notice what the Lord says, verse 34. Jesus answering them, Verily I say, Verily, verily, I say to you, Whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the Son abideth forever. If the Son, therefore, shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. Well, that's called liberty. Liberty. That's called salvation. And uh, Paul is saying here in Galatians chapter 5 that you need to stand fast in the liberty wherein Christ has made us free and not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. And that's what exactly what the Galatians were doing. Let's go next as we think about uh, liberty uh, endangered. That was, uh, I just mentioned, liberty proclaimed or and procured. Liberty proclaimed and procured. But let's look at liberty uh, endangered. You know, talk about the endangered species? Well, maybe here in Galatian, in these churches, uh, liberty was endangered. And, and I like that word, um, stand fast. Boy, isn't that really uh, what is needed today in our churches, in our colleges, uh, in individual lives, in our homes, in our leading of, of, of husbands and fathers in our homes, uh, that we would stand fast. Let me give you a couple of verses here to remind you of this word. 1 Corinthians 6.13 says, Watch ye, stand fast in the faith. Quit ye like men, be strong. Wow. Philippians 1.27 Only let your conversation be as if you come at the gospel of Christ, that whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs, that you stand fast in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. And finally, 1 Thessalonians 3.8 says, For now we live, if we stand fast in the Lord. You see, liberty was being endangered here. Endangered. Now, again, uh, it's, it's so optical, you know, so, so much application for today, you see. Uh, you know, when, when people, you know, 9-11 uh, and the, uh, what, the Patriot Act, and now um, Prime Minister Harper has passed a new terrorist law, uh, that, it, that really is uh, uh, far-reaching. <laughs> and, and you see, and so what is the, the West doing, in a sense? They're balancing liberty and security. You see, you're going to have to give up your liberty in order to be secure. And as we give up more and more of our liberty, they're saying that we are more and more secure. So they can look at your emails, they can take your... Uh, you know, conversation on the phone. Uh, I mean, you, you, Facebook, internet, cell phones, all that is open. The government's monitoring them right now. But see, but they're saying that we have to do that in order to keep you safe and so and for you to have liberty. But see, liberty here is endangered. First of all. In verses 1 through 12 in Galatians 5, by legalism. Oh, that word legalism. I hate that word. Legalism. But also, it's, it's endangered by license. License. Verse 13 through 26. You see, license. You see, you know what the legalist says? 
Let us, you know, if you're not saved by works, and works don't have anything to do with your justification, and uh, since that's the case, Romans chapter 6, uh, the legalist will say, let us sin that grace may abound. Let us sin that grace may abound. No, no. You see, liberty is endangered by legalism as much as it's endangered by license. You know, a Christian heresy, the Christian carnal heresy, and once saved, always saved, and a decisionism, and easy believism, that, that, that is destroying liberty, true liberty. These ones haven't been set free, have they? Not according to John 8. But also, there's hope. <laughs> you see, liberty is endangered, but you see, but Christian liberty is going to be evident by love because grace is dynamic, you see. That's why Paul, in the, in the last part of chapter 5, you know, we get into the fruit of the Spirit versus the fruit, the, the works of the flesh. And, and we're going to see that, you see, it's not a rule and regulation of legalism. It's not licenseness. No, it's love. You know, uh, the love in our hearts by the Holy Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace. You see, that love is dynamic. That love is powerful. That's the love that sets us free. That's the love that sets us free. But see, uh, Paul says, stand fast. Liberty is in danger. Let me go further here uh, and, and, and try to uh, explain how the Galatians' liberty was in danger. There's a, there's a uh, chain of events. Chain of events. Hmm. First the phone starts ringing. No. Uh, chain of events. Listen for a minute. Do you suppose you lose your liberty over uh, all of a sudden? I mean, you think of it in, in the political uh, realm, Canada, U.S., the West. I believe all, overall we're losing our liberty because God is, is, has given us up to judgment. Really, I do. That's what I believe. Um, we can't abort all those millions of babies and, and destroy the family and, and uh, legalize same-sex marriage. And the churches is, the church is, is worse than the world, Okay. And to think that, you see, the idea is that God has given us over to the will of our enemies. It was an interesting, um, I don't know who was praying this night, tonight, talking about the, some of these ones that God has saved from, from the Muslim world, and, and now they're Christians, and, and I have a few of their books, and I follow some of their, their websites, and, and, and it's good information uh, to keep me up to date on, on uh, how to witness to, to a Muslim. But you see, the man said, Whenever the church is in the uh, arms of declension, Islam always rises up in revival. Now think of that. Whenever the church is not doing her job and standing fast, Islam raises its ugly head. And historically, that's true. That's true. Maybe Islam is going to be the, the scourge like the Syrians or the Babylonians. Could be. Because, you know, uh, we do value our liberty, but see, that's not what we have today in many churches and many, many countries. Cornwall, it's not liberty, it's license, right? It's a license to sin. But you see here, this chain of events didn't happen all of a sudden, and you found out they were in bondage. You know, notice it says there in verse 1, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherein Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled. They were entangled. Um, look at verse, I think, 7. Verse 7. You did run well. Who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? The ultimate... Uh, in the sense, the designation where they're going is found in verse 4. Christ is become of no effect unto you. Whosoever of you are justified by the law, you are fallen from grace. Wow. This morning we talked about, you know, the grace preacher and the results of grace. And now Paul is talking to these Galatian Christians. You have fallen from grace. And... Uh, Maybe like the, Ephesians, uh, the church of Ephesus there in Revelation, you know, 
uh, you have left your first. You don't know how how far you have fallen. And this is the this is the chain of events, and this is what's happening here. Okay, what does it mean to fall? They were falling from grace. Now, first of all, brother, it doesn't mean that you lose your salvation. That's not what Paul is talking about here. He's not talking about losing salvation. Uh, that's Armenian doctrine, you know. Uh, we, we're, we don't. We believe preservation and perseverance of the saints. Okay. Uh, and, but see, to fall, uh, this meaning, to fall from grace, is to fall from one's steadfastness. To fall from liberty. To fall from stability. Peter says this, 2 Peter 3.17. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, beware lest also, being led away with the air of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness. Now, you think of that for a minute, um, how, how we struggle with that. All of us as Christians. Stability, consistency, steadfastness. And uh, Paul says to the Corinthians, always abounding in the word of the Lord. Steadfast. Okay? Same put. We're going to get uh, later on in chapter 6 when we, we talk about no, that's, that's in Ephesians chapter 6 where Paul says, stand against the enemy. Stand against the wiles of the devil. Having done all, stand. When the enemy comes in like a flood, you're to stand and resist the devil. You see, and here's what Paul is saying. They have fallen from their steadfastness. Another word that you can uh, kind of uh, think of is that they are, they are in the process of uh, shipwrecking their faith. They're in a process of shipwrecking their faith. Talks about 1 Timothy 1.19. Those that hold in faith and a good conscience, which have which some have been put away concerning faith, that means a good conscience, have made shipwrecked their faith. They're, you know, see, like I was thinking about Jude, remember those spots? And the, the word spots was with the sense like rocks underneath the, the, the the, the, the sea, and you don't see those rocks, and you're running your ship, and you run into those rocks, and you shipwreck your faith. Well, this is what they're doing. They're falling from grace. Their steadfastness. They're in the process. They, they haven't done it all. I mean, uh, you see, they haven't fallen from grace. They are falling. Big difference, okay? They're not apostates. They're not reprobate. But see, them was, if they don't turn in repentance, if they don't turn in, and renounce these false teachings and, and run back to Christ and run back to the gospel, then we have to come to the conclusion that they, have never, they were never saved. It is not that they lost their salvation. It is that they were never in Christ. Like, like the Hebrew, uh, the book of Hebrews. Remember, the, these are Hebrew Christians that are saved. They're under great persecution. And the temptation was what? For them to go back from Christ, from the church, local church, to go back to Judaism. Go back to the temple. Go back to the high priest. Go back to the, the old Mosaic law. Go back to Moses. And the Hebrew writer says, no, 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 no. Stand fast. Stand fast. So fall in, from grace. Fall from grace. Notice here, I want you to see what does it mean to fall from grace. Look at that, verse 2. What does it say there? Galatians 5, verse 2. Behold, I, Paul, say unto you that if you be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. Wow. You know, in salvation, as Paul says, Christ has made us free. But in, in falling from grace... You make the Lord Jesus, as it were, uh, it says, Christ shall not profit you nothing. And look at verse 4. Look what it says. Christ has become of no effect unto you. Wow. See, that's what Paul's meaning when he says, you have fallen from grace. Okay? Verse 12, verse 2. Christ shall profit you nothing. Verse 4. Uh, Christ has become of no effect unto you. Let's look at those two words for a minute to try or phrases and figure out. You see, shall profit speaks of future meaning to assist, to be useful or advantageous. You see, uh, it, 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 circumcision, the sign of the old covenant from feast, um, from the feast now to circumcision. 
They, they have gone further deep into legalism. Paul says this is being entangled um, with the yoke of bondage, verse 1. See, it wasn't really freedom. It, was, it, it, it wasn't liberty. It, Paul calls it bondage. And so, the first of all, it says that, uh, verse 2, Behold, I, Paul, say unto you that if you be circumcised, Christ shall profit you not. Think of what does that mean? Not profit you. All, all, he, Christ will not be advantage. Your advantage. He will not um, uh, to assist you to be useful. What can you do without Christ? I mean, what what can you do apart from grace? And, and grace is in Christ. And be severed from Christ. How, how, you know that that's the idea. You see, they were going to circumcisions. Circumcision. They were uh, first introduced to feast back in chapter 4. Now they're going to circumcision. They're going deeper into the law, deeper into what the Judaizers said was liberty, but in fact was bondage. Paul says here, uh, uh, be not entangled, verse 1, again, with the yoke of bondage. It's interesting. Let me read to you Colossians chapter 2, 4, 16 and 18, about how Judaizers or uh, the, the Colossian heresies were coming in. Notice what it said there. Colossians 2, 4 says this. And this I say, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words. See how they were being entangled? They were listening to the Judaizers. Verse 16, Colossians 2, 16. <clears throat> Let no man therefore judge you in meat, or in drink, or in respect of holy day, or of the new moon, or the Sabbath days. Notice it says, let no man therefore judge you. In a sense, try to criticize and, and condemn you and say, you know, uh, you know these, these ones that are in the Hebrew root movement and the, the fresh, uh, what is this called? It's the uh, sacred name movement. You know, these are ones that are uh, not all, uh, they're not in the same group as, as many uh, what we call Messianic uh, Judaism. Uh, they're, they're, they're worse, actually, sacred name movement and the Hebrew roots of his heresy. You see, they're saying they're, they're embracing liberty. You see, they're, they're embracing um, freedom. No, 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 let me read something, just a quote from one of them. My life changed since I started to keep his Sabbath, his feast and his laws. Don't tell me there's no power on the Sabbath. I'm experiencing in each time. I never had this with normal Christianity. The only way we can be blessed is if we are obedient. Only then can we receive all that Yahweh has to give to his obedient children. Stop doing things your way and start doing what the Creator instructed from the beginning of time. Well, that's freedom. No, no, Paul says that's bondage. That's in being entangled. That's by listening to these ones as I mentioned, uh, that beguile you, that judge you, Colossians uh, 2.18, let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility and worshiping the angels, intruding into those things which he had not seen, they be puffed up with his false name. Notice it says, let no man beguile you of your reward in voluntary, it is like, you know, um, in the book of Revelation, it says this, now think of this for a minute, brother. The Lord says, Behold, I come quickly. Revelation 3.11 Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. You see, the, Ju the Judaizers were taking the crown, or in a, in a worse sense, the Galatians were taking the crown off and giving it to the Judaizers, in a sense, as the Judaizers would say, We promise you liberty. We promise you freedom. But Paul says, in fact, they were entangled and they were in bondage. Notice here in verse 4, Galatians 5, verse 4. Christ has become of no effect unto you. Whosoever you are justified by the law, you are fallen from grace. Become of no effect unto you. First of all, uh, Christ shall not profit you. Wow. I mean, where would we be tonight? If the grace and the work of Christ and the redemption and the work of the Holy Spirit and the, and you know it would not be you know that's that's all we have, brother, don't we? You see, the, the Galatians were willfully uh, 
deceptively, okay, being deceived, they were uh, making Christ of none, no profit, no advantage, no, 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 uh, uh, no help. But then it goes to work. It becomes worse there. But it says, become of no effect unto you. Verse 4. And what does that mean? Become of no effect unto you. It means separation. Severed from Christ. Could you imagine being out of the reach of grace as a believer? Wow. What does that mean? To be out of reach of grace as a believer. You know, every time we sin... And we don't confess our sins. John says, you know, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. But notice what else he says. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he's in the light, we, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. You see, every time we sin, if we don't repent, and if we don't confess our sins and use the means of grace, this is all, this is God's tools, right? The Lord's tools that He gives to us. You see, uh, what are we doing? Are we not severing ourselves from Christ? Are we not out of reach of His grace? It, it's not gonna, it's not gonna be permanent. But if we refuse to repent, and, we, and the Lord has an issue with us, and we continue in that sin, you know, He's gonna chasten us, yes, for sure, but while we're in darkness, while we refuse to repent, it's in a sense that we, uh, Christ has become of no effect unto you. The Lord Jesus says in John 15, 5, I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I am him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. He says, sever from me. And I, I believe this is what the Galatians are doing. They're, they're, they haven't totally fallen. Okay. But they're, they're heading that way. You see, the Galatians, let me put it this way. The Galatians were not out of the race. But they were thrown off course. Ever been there? Christian, listen. The, the, the Galatians were, weren't out of the race, but they were thrown off course. Uh, Ephesians 4, verse 14 says this. That you henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the sly of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. You know, the wind was blowing and they were blown off course. They became out of bounds, as it were. Grace became off limits. That, see, it's Christ and Christ alone. And, and as soon as you add legalism or any form of works to justification or to sanctification. It says that Christ shall profit you nothing. It says that uh, Christ has become of no effect unto you. Whosoever of you are justified by the law, you are fallen from grace. You see, their pursuit of legalism, bondage, the law, Get this in your mind as a picture. Their pursuit of legalism and allowing the Judaizers to convince them they needed to be circumcised, they needed to do the dietary laws, they needed to become a Jew before they could become a Christian, they needed to keep the Sabbath, they needed to keep the more Mosaic law, the Ten Commandments, and all that. Their pursuit of legalism and bondage, the law, was carrying them away further and further up from Christ. Imagine a swift current drawing you away from safety, drawing you away from liberty, drawing you away from grace, and ultimately drawing you away from Christ. See, this is what Paul's saying here. Uh, you have fallen from grace. You've been entangled, okay? Someone hindered you, you it, tri it tripped you up, okay, for running the Christian race, and now you're fallen from grace. And as you're falling from grace, Christ shall profit you nothing. Wow. That's, that's what blows my mind. Think of that. Or it says, Christ is become of no effect unto you. You're out of bounds. You, you're, you're further. You know, you, and again, uh, we say, well, God's grace, uh, God can step in. God can rescue. Yes, he's going to do that by his grace. Okay. Uh, but we also have the responsibility, don't we? Let no man be down you. Don't listen to enticing words. 
Shun uh, these false teachings, these false doctrines. Run from them. <laughs> Don't listen to them. Don't entertain them. Uh, contend against them if you have to. So that was liberty in danger. Let's go to the next one we've done tonight. Liberty redefined. Liberty redefined. Now I think that's what we have today. You know, liberty is, you know, uh, being in a, uh, the new world order. Liberty is uh, submitting like sheep, you know, uh, with, a, with a, this kind of mindset that uh, the government knows best. The government doesn't know best, okay? Politicians don't know too much. We need to pray for them. Supreme Court justices. You know what? Uh, I believe in, in probably in springtime, the, the U.S. Supreme Court, are, are they going to come back and rule on same sex? And uh, I, was, I was reading some of the, uh, uh, Ginsburg, I think she is the, one of the Supreme Court justices, and she's a liberal, she's a drunkard. That's what it, that's what it says. I mean, uh, but she says the American people are ready for same sex. Amer the American people are ready for same sex. You see, God has given us the judgment. But see, the thing I'm saying is that these people, uh, that this is liberty. This, you are, let everybody have their own, you know. No, it's not liberty. It's license to sin. It's bondage. It's, it's judgment of God upon America and the West. But see, in order for uh, them to get anywhere, liberty has to be redefined. And that's what has happened today. Notice here, the Judaizers are stepping up their attack now. Uh, we said that uh, in, in, in Galatians 4.10, notice there what Paul says. He says, uh, you observe days and months and times and years. This is like, you know, the dietary laws are, for, are good for you. And you shouldn't eat bacon. Sorry, Ben. And you hear that all the time. The dietary laws are good. You know, I, I've known a lot of people. I mean, I've... Uh, the, can't think of his name at the moment, uh, in Texas. Uh, I'll think of his name in a minute. Sister Louise uh, Sublition was in his girls' camp and in girls' home. Uh, Ralph Lester Roll. Lester Roll. Man, mightily, mightily used of God. There in Texas, he had girls' schools and stuff, and God was using. Uh, uh, but he, one of his, his things is that everybody was going to uh, submit to the dietary laws, and, and you know, the girls were healthy. But you see that, that that's that like like that's well yeah well is it it is all about nutrition? No. But see, they started with the feast, observance of days, like this one woman, you know, oh the, I never experienced power until I started observing the Sabbath. I've been there, I've been to seven day Adventist, seven day Baptist, I've been in Reformed Baptist thinking that we, we used to talk about the Christian Sabbath. You haven't, you've never, never experienced that. Sit there and, and talk about the Christian Sabbath. The Lord's Day on Sunday. Puritan thinking, Reformed Baptist thinking. I have, I have. I know all about that. Seven-day Baptist. Seven-day seven day Adventist. It's all about the Sabbath. No, it's all about bondage. It's all about giving up liberty. And so they started with the feast, and now they come into circumcision. Notice here, how many times, five times, the Apostle Paul in chapter 5 mentions this, this idea of circumcision. Verse 2, verse 3, and verse 6. At least five times in those verses. Now, we have to think for a minute. Is, is the Apostle Paul slamming circumcision and Judaism, the Old Covenant? No. Not one bit. He's not slamming Judaism. You know, he's a Jew. <laughs> you know, they're, they're Jewish believers. Okay? And, and, and yes, this idea of the sign of the covenant and circumcision, oh, you know, you see, one time all that was good. It was part of God's program when Israel was a minor under the schoolmaster, a baby, as it were. We, we studied that out. But now, but now, it's, it's not good for the Galatians. It's not good for us. It, it's bondage. Jewish bondage. Or Gentile bondage, dear ones, is still bondage. 
Remember, the, what, what was the Galatians? These are Gentiles. Paul talks about how they were. Um, notice it says uh, in verse 8, chapter 4, How be then, when you knew not God, you did service unto them which by nature are no gods? They were, they were in pagan bondage. Heathenism. Now, they are in Jewish bondage, as it were. Judaizers. But you see here once, Jewish, uh, Gentile bondage or Jewish bondage is still bondage. Still bondage. Dressed up and disguised as liberty. Liberty. You see the, 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 the cult that comes to your door, they're going to say, don't you want to be spiritual? Don't you want to grow in grace? Don't you want to be more like the Lord Jesus? Well, we have this secret formula. We, we have these little things. Look, look if you would, 2 Peter 2.19. See if you can recognize this, or see what I'm getting at. 2 Peter 2.19 While they promise them, what? Liberty. They themselves are the servants of corruption, for whom a man is overcome, of the same is brought into bondage. And, and Peter's talking about false teachers, apostates, he's talking about those that are preaching another gospel, another Christ, and, and there's liberty, liberty, there's liberty in license, there's liberty in legalism. No, never. And, and, and chap, back in chapter 5 of Galatians, I want you to see that, that you know, uh, liberty is redefined and, and how Paul makes this a very serious issue. Okay? It's not just... You know, Romans 14 and 15 about Christian liberty, you know, if a brother wants to eat herbs and stuff like that, or, or if he wants to observe a day, that, that's far beyond. No, these Judaizers were, were intentionally wanting to bring these Christians into bondage. And Paul says it later on. They, they, you know, they don't keep the law, they just glory in the flesh. They just glory in the sense that they have overcome these believers and brought them into bondage. That's, all, that's what Paul says in Galatians. Galatians 6. These, these Judaizers didn't love the Galatians. They didn't care for the Galatians. They didn't care for the Christians. They had an agenda. They had the law. They had the Sabbath. They had the dietary laws. And they were bringing these people into, into bondage. But it was serious, okay? Very serious. When you think about this, how serious is, is it when you're falling from grace? How serious you know, how far downstream are you? Well, it might, it might be an evidence that you're not, you're not even saved. You know, I, you know, carried about by every wind of doctrine. You know, isn't that the, the heartache of a, of a pastor? Or, 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 you know, think of, you know, the sheep get into this, and the sheep get into this, and they're listening to this garbage, and this... They have no sense of stability. They have no sense of, of you, know, you know, the golden thread that's through truth and throughout the ages, through history, you know, of sound doctrine, sound practice. They don't listen to anything. And then you wonder why some of the brothers get in, into, into trouble. But notice here, the seriousness is putting them outside of the saving interest of Christ. They were closing the door of grace. It wasn't always all, 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 all the way closed. Could you imagine that? Could you fathom that? Okay. Purposely closing the door of grace. The seriousness of this is seen in verse three. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to, to do the whole the whole law. And I don't think the Galatian saints here had, had a clue, really, of the implications of their turning from Christ, from grace to law. It says, you're going to be a debtor to the whole law. Now, is that what we see today in, for example, the, uh, the Hebrew Roots Movement or, or the uh, uh, Sacred Name Movement, uh, these Judaizers? No, no, they pick and choose. They go back to the Old Testament, they pick and choose. They don't weigh the whole law. They don't put themselves under the whole... I mean, they're not putting themselves totally under the covenant of works. They pick and choose. Pick and choose. Paul says, no, no. If you get circumcised, uh, if you're justified, you're, you're, you, you know, you become you're a debtor to the whole 
law, the whole law. Notice the real issue in verse 4. Christ has become of no effect to you, whosoever you are justified by law. How can you be justified by law? Can you do that? Can we, do, can, can we be justified by law? No. Paul says they were justified by faith through Christ alone. Look at uh, Galatians uh, 2 verse 21. We'll go back where Paul had defended the gospel. Look at verse 21. When he, remember when Paul and Peter are there in Antioch and, and Paul rebukes Peter and, and he begins to expound how, how a sinner is saved, how they got saved, and justification by faith alone. In verse 21, I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Christ died in vain. That's the seriousness of this matter. You see, they're falling from grace. They're, you know, liberty is in danger, okay? Uh, but see, the problem is the Judaizers have redefined grace, or redefined liberty, let's put it that way. Dietary laws, Ten Commandments, Sabbath keeping, they take more and more. But you see, no, no, they're actually putting themselves out, shutting the door, excluding Christ. They're severing themselves from the interest in grace that's in Christ Jesus. What would be the true hope? Well, Paul goes back to that and we'll be done. Look at it, it says there in chapter 5, verse 5. You see, uh, no, no, Paul says, we're not going to redefine liberty. What's true liberty? For we, through the Spirit, wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. Notice it says there, we wait. We're not working. Christ has done it all. But we are waiting, and as we think about, we are positionally righteous, and uh, practically we're being made righteous, and we're obeying uh, the Lord Jesus in the Spirit, life in the Spirit, the law of Christ. All those things were producing fruit, were pro producing godly character. Peter says, if these things be in you. You see, godly character is what God is looking for in our hearts tonight. And when we have godly character, you know what? You will have godly conduct. And yes, you will fulfill the requirements of the law there in, in Romans 13. Why? Because love is the fulfilling of the law. The law can never produce fruit. We'll see that in Galatians chapter 5. Let me close with this. Look at Acts 22:28. Acts 22:28. This is, uh, I believe, Paul is uh, on the ship here, uh, uh, or he's uh, not on the ship yet, but he's, he's uh, going to, to either to Rome, Jerusalem. I didn't look at all the way, but I, I was thinking about this this verse about liberty. Okay, Acts 22:28. And the chief captain answered, "With a great sum obtained I this freedom." Paul said, but I was freeborn. And so the idea is that Paul's asking the centurion, Were you, are you a free man? You see, the, the slavery was a big thing in, in, in the Roman economy, okay? Uh, it wasn't always in a sense of what we think about in the Civil War and all that. But you see, so this one says, with a great sum obtained I this freedom. Dear ones, who has made you free? Well, Paul says, it was the Lord Jesus. Did you earn it? No. Did you pay for it? Like the centurion? A great sum obtained I this freedom. No, no. Notice what it says there in uh, verse 1, Galatians 5. Christ has made us free. Oh, the great liberator. The Lord Jesus is the great liberator. Great liberator. Now I was watching them. Uh, when the, uh, the Allies liberated France, uh, Rome. And how was a race <laughs> by the generals to get into Rome and liberate, be the first one there to liberate the Rome. And, and then uh, uh, Paris, things of that sort. And it was, it was a big thing. Could, and they, and they talked about the U.S. and the Allies, Allies, Allies being the liberators, you know. Could you imagine 
You know, all the blood of the Canadians and the Americans and all the people, all the allies that worked to liberate uh, Italy and France and all that. You see, they came in and they liberated those people by God's grace and, and, and they then all of a sudden they, they, the Americans leave, the Canadians leave, they leave and what do they do? They open their arms back to the Nazis. Come, we want you back. He said, these guys are crazy. Well, see, that's what the Judaizers were doing. That's what the Galatians were doing. The Lord Jesus had liberated them, and now they're saying, come on back, come on back. We want, we want to be under your bondage. We want to be under legalism. No, no. You see, grace brings freedom. Compare. Grace brings sonship. Law brings slavery. Grace brings blessing. Law brings curses. Grace brings hope and rejoicing. Law brings condemnation and death. Grace brings liberty. Liberty. Law brings bondage. Paul says, ye are fallen from grace. Wow. See, the Galatians had put themselves under law voluntarily, and they were severing themselves from the grace of God. One man put it this way, and it's, think of this, picture this in your mind. Christ plus legalism. Christ plus legalism equals Christ minus the legalist. Do you get the picture? Christ plus legalism equals Christ minus the legalist. You sever yourself. You fall from grace. You get entangled. You're hindered up. And if you don't get liberated again, <laughs> it's a good sign that you've never were saved. But see, the importance of this, these, these verses that Paul is saying here, he says, uh, stand fast, verse 1. Stand fast. Paul says, I would give up what? The Philippians 3, he said, I would give up my, my pedigree, I give up my legalism, I give up my righteousness, I give up everything being a Hebrew of the Hebrews, all this. He said, I, I give all these these plus things that he thought were, were plus things. He said, I, I count them as dung, I throw them in the trash, that I, this is my evaluation, that I might win Christ, that I might have Christ alone. He said, there was nothing that could be added to Christ. Paul says, I, I just counted all them. Philippians chapter 3. He ditched it. He counted his dung. Anything, everyone that got in his way, that hindered him from getting to Christ. And Paul says, you know, or what would we say today? Uh, what do I have to give up to be saved? Then people sometimes, older adults, what do I, I have to give up something. Yeah, you have to give up everything. You have to give up your life. You have to give up your sins. You have to give up yourself. The Lord Jesus says, if any man follow me, what? Let him deny self, take up his cross, and follow me. Paul says, I, I give up everything. You see, Christ plus legalism equals Christ minus the legalist. And these Galatians were, were, were in a sense, cutting themselves off from the fountainhead, the source of all true grace. Pretty serious. Look at verse 6. We'll read that and we'll pray. And really, this, there's so much there, but we will leave it at that for now, as we think about uh, this matter of liberty. Verse 6. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. You see, these ones were... In, 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 in a sense, were falling from grace. They were making themselves uh, separated from grace, from the Lord Jesus. And there he speaks of this great thing. <coughs> faith, dynamic faith, which worketh by love. Dear ones, isn't that real for you? Think of that for a minute. Serving one another in love, serving the Lord Jesus in love. You see, uh, love it doesn't 
uh, it covers a multitude of sins. Love helps us to love one another, and 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 and, and the whole idea of liberty, you know. Liberty without the love of God and the grace of God actively in our hearts turns into legalism and turns into a license of sin. No, no. Paul says, but faith which worketh by love. Exhortation tonight. Verse 1. This is what it says there. We'll pray. Stand fast. Therefore, in the liberty wherein Christ has made us free. And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Dear ones, listen, young people. Stand fast. Stand fast in truth. Stand fast in sound doctrine. Stand fast in, in godly living. Stand fast, therefore. And, and remember what the Lord Jesus has done for you. He freed you. He saved you. That you might be able to enjoy the liberty of grace. Coming into His presence, worshiping Him, sonship, all those things we mentioned, blessings upon blessings upon blessings. Dear ones, that's called liberty. Now the world would call that what? Bondage. Religion. Let me ask you, do you know the Lord Jesus? Do you know Him savingly? Have you trusted Him? Have you turned from your sin? Let me ask you, dear Christian, are you down that stream? <laughs> That, that, that stream that's taking you away from grace, taking you away from Christ. You may not be totally fallen from grace, but are you be, in a sense, like it says there in verse 2, Christ shall profit you nothing. Verse 4, Christ has become of no effect unto you. A Christian, that's Christian, that can happen to Christians. Where you're adding anything to Christ for your justification, for your standing. But see, don't turn your liberty into a license to sin either. That's not liberty. That's right. Father, thank you for this time. Thank you for the words uh, liberty. You think of that. But we realize the Lord Jesus died on the cross and uh, took our sins for the punishment of God that we might have sonship that we might have the gift of the Holy Spirit, that we might have eternal life. Oftentimes, we, we, in, in Remembrance Day and the poppies and all these things, and we, we talk about our veterans, and it should be that way, Lord. Some of these men gave up so much, so much. But let us this night realize how much the Lord Jesus gave up, that we might be free. That we might be free. The Lord says, if we are his disciples, we will continue in his word. And if the Son has made you free, you shall be free indeed. Amen. Free indeed. So Lord, help us to guard, to cherish the liberty that we have. Let us not put it in danger. Let us not redefine it. But let us proclaim it and what the Lord Jesus has done for us in that he has set us free. Oh, glorious liberty. Glorious liberty. And we wait for the day, one day, when we will be delivered from this uh, bondage of sin, and this uh, uh, indwelling sin, and this, this flesh, and we'll see you, and we'll be resurrected, and we'll be uh, the total liberty of the sons of God. Oh God, we wait for that day. Till then, Lord, give us grace to be steadfast. Steadfast, unmovable. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. For we know, it says, that our labor is not in Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name.